All righty, um, welcome to today's video. It's super exciting. This is something I really enjoy talking about. And um, yeah, so for those of you that don't know, um, I am a business manager. I've managed uh, for one specific large company in North America for about 11 years. Um, and now I'm on to a different restaurant and brand um, after the panorama. And uh, it's super exciting. I really enjoy business. And those of you that have been with me for the three years, the two years, the one years, you've probably heard me talk some sort of business sense in some sort of way about Cedar Fair, talking about the stocks. It is my interest. Well, I am presenting today my specific business plan for Park Lake Canada's Wonderland coming out of the panorama. Um, especially Canada's Wonderland, considering they're going on roughly approximately 1.5 seasons of no revenue. So I have developed a four point plan to help gain back some of that lost revenue and come out stronger um, out of this panorama. Um, I'm gonna stop saying that word, it's getting overused. Out of this pandemic. <laughs> Nonetheless, um, I'm trying to think if like I need to explain anything else before going into this. So, like, if, For those of you that don't know, business plans are something that um, if you've been a store manager or a business manager or a restaurant manager, a business plan is something you form to grow your business over X amount of years, X amount of months, X amount of weeks. Um, usually your business development manager will come into your store and they'll find a problem area or an area of opportunity. So for example, when I worked for this specific company for 11 years, I helped open a lot of new stores. So some of my business plans were like, how are you going to get this store to X amount of sales? What are you going to do in the, uh, the, uh, the community? Are you going to do community service? Are you going to, you know, uh, give out a lot of, uh, free, uh, <laughs> I'm trying to like explain this without giving away where I worked. Um, but are, you know, you're going to give away a lot of samples to like the firefighters uh, and the police stations and etc. But nonetheless, business plans can be super in depth and business plans can be super easy. It all depends on the situation. This one's a little more in depth because it's coming out of the pandemic. Wonderland needs to recoup some of those lost sales over the last 1.5 seasons and also not spend too much over the next couple years. Now, a lot of people um, in the past, uh, Wonderland bought a new roller coaster coming out of the pandemic and that is uh likely there is a chance that wonderland could do that but there are smarter ways that wonderland could increase their sales so this is my idea for canada's wonderland to come out of the pandemic successfully and i really do think it could work um and to be honest i think there's a great chance that we could see some of these ideas um come to light so step one is year-round events i think in canada a lot of people don't understand we are looking for things to do from january to March and April. There's nothing to do in Canada. You gotta learn how to ski. Um, coming out of the pandemic, we're super bored. People have a lot more savings in their accounts. People are looking for ways to spend money. Um, I believe the statistic was 28%, uh, Canadians had 28% more savings than they did before the pandemic. So again, people have money and they're gonna wanna spend it and we're gonna wanna do things. So the minute things start to go back to normal, businesses have a lot of opportunity to hop on and grab some of those savings. Um, and give ways for Canadians to like do things. I, I wanna get out, I wanna go do things. I'm sick of my house, I don't wanna be in here. <laughs> um, but nonetheless, I think that they could do drive-through events. So again, if we're still in the pandemic, um, they need to start looking at some drive-through events. They can't just sit there looking pretty and losing money. Um, so we, they could start looking at some drive-through events in the evening, on the weekdays even, when they start to open up on weekends, they could do drive-through events similar to what Six Flags do. There's a, uh, Six Flags did. It's definitely a great way to drive some revenue. Um, their winter spring events, like I talked about, huge opportunity to be open from January to March or April. Um, it could be literally a drive through light festival. It could be some sort of food festival in the park with just like maybe one or two rides open um, that can handle those temperatures. Doesn't need to be anything serious, you know, just some sort of event that Canadians can go to throughout the winter. And it is very very easy for them to market that. Again, Winterfest was the most successful at Canada's Wonderland in terms of a launch. And that goes to show that they can probably extend or build off of that success that they had with Winterfest into those winter months where Canadians start to be forced into their homes with nothing to do other than go snee to uh, ski toboggan um, and uh, go downtown Toronto for some of those winter events. So Wonderland definitely has 
uh, opportunity there. I think that they need to start uh, focusing on those food festivals that they do so well in the summer. I would really like to see food festivals kind of be like a permanent thing. There's always something going on, whether it be spring, uh, winter. I would think they really need to hop on that fall food festival bandwagon. There's so much lost opportunity in the fall. And then even winter, their food menu for Winterfest was amazing. So even just expanding on that with some sort of winter food festival um, year round, even from January to April, I think would be absolutely insane. Um, step number two would be food and beverage. So this is something I've always wanted Wonderland to do, and I think it is such a lost opportunity that they have not done this yet. And that is abnormal food. And what I mean by abnormal food is like almost like c and &E style food or those um, TikTok or Instagram trend foods. So I think Wonderland needs to go out and do some research. Um, and find those foods that would literally draw someone in with a post. And they need to make it like Instagrammable or TikTokable, <laughs> if that makes sense. Something that people want to go out with their group of friends or film it or take a picture of it. So I'm, I'm, one classic example that they just did is the cheesecake on a stick. Awesome. I would love to see some deep fried food like you see at the CNE or something really gross that would like get people to be like, oh God, did you try that? Or did you see that? Or that looks horrible. You know, just something like that would draw people in. I think that they should have one restaurant at Wonderland that literally is focused around that or even in an area or like a little food truck area that focuses on that somewhere in Canada's Wonderland. They have Kingswood Theater area. It is mostly unused throughout the season and to turn that into a food truck festival area or, you know, like a bar or a restaurant that serves these kinds of things, that, that, there's a lot of opportunity over there. World Expo. So he, my ultimate dream for World Expo is for it to come back. And there is such an opportunity for them to serve international foods in World Expo, showcasing the world stage of food. So you could have different cultures, different styles of food, all featured in World Expo with one star attraction. It does not have a star attraction yet. Um, and I would really like to see the Backlot Cafe renovated back to its former Japanese glory. I believe it was themed to Japan. Um, or had some Japanese influence. Again, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe that. I was really young when it existed. But nonetheless, I really would like that to come back. Um, and then a bar. Wonderland does have bars, and they serve very basic drinks. I would like to see them serve um, unique drinks, like something you can go where you can go down and get those like mixed drinks. I would like that at Wonderland. That would be awesome. So I definitely think there's an opportunity to even just set up little booths, bars, where you can get mixed drinks. Similar to... Um, for example, when we go to La Ronde, we could do that. So I would love to see something like that at Wonderland. I, you know I'd be carrying double fisting those drinks. <laughs> I'm kidding. But nonetheless, it's something that Wonderland's definitely missing out on. Step number, give me a second, I need to breathe. I feel like I'm speaking way too fast and not breathing. And you can tell in the way I'm talking, I'm like stuttering nonetheless. But step number three. Clickbait attraction. So for those of you who followed along on my channel, I like to use that word clickbait attraction. And now is the time for Wonderland to build a clickbait attraction. Three examples would be some sort of clickbait flat ride. They're really cheap on the budget. They don't need to invest a lot of money. Make it you know, a little more extravagant in terms of theming to fit it into whatever area they're gonna put it into. Um, and make it like world's tallest of it or something that looks really cool to the eye that if they put it in a commercial on the tv people are gonna be like oh god i gotta go check that out other thing would be a 40 coaster i know a lot of enthusiasts right now are probably groaning blah 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 it's already been done it we're talking about canada so if you built those 40 free spins the sns ones the pretty ones at canada's wonderland right now and advertise that to all the news stations the radio stations and a commercial and just Instagram and all that, people will come. I guarantee you, if they built a 4D coaster right now, it would draw a lot of people. Third option is a water coaster. If they built a water coaster in Splash Rex right now and advertise it the same way, it would draw a lot of people. We haven't seen that in Canada yet. I don't think there probably is one somewhere out away from Toronto area, or maybe there is one in the Toronto area. I don't know. But a water coaster at Splashworks would draw a lot of people in. Those three, to me, are the most three clickbait attractions that they could invest in that are cheap on the budget, but would draw in a lot of customers. Step number four is exclusive events. Have a pricey upcharge event, for example, evening hours. We see Six Flags doing that. I could see Wonderland doing some sort of event where from 10 p.m. to 1 a.m. or 12 a.m., maybe not necessarily running the three biggest uh, roller coasters in the park because of the noise complaints. 
um, or the ones, I believe it's Behemoth and Yukon that can't because of the neighborhood. Leviathan, I think you might be able to run. I'm not quite sure. Maybe not Leviathan, but you could rent out, not rent out, you could upcharge a pretty pricey ticket from 10 a.m. to 1 a.m., 10 p.m. to 1 a.m. to ride all the other rides in the park that don't aren't necessarily causing a ruckus. You don't need very loud music. I know music was one of the things at Halloween Haunt. Um, so if you just had lower music and few attractions open and you upcharged and you had drinks for, you know, the adults or young adults, um, it, would draw in, it would draw in a crowd. I really do think so. Um, another thing would be mountain tours. I don't think that would typically be too big of a hit. Um, I don't think it would impact their revenue too much, but I just wanted to throw it on there. Um, I do think that there's an opportunity that they could have an upcharge for mountain tours. I know I would take part in it. I know a lot of enthusiasts would, but I also think a lot of people would take part in some sort of mountain tour up there. Um, even in the basement of the mountain, you know, you could do a whole mountain tour, not of the rides, obviously, as they're running, just in the safe areas. They fenced off the vortex area, by the way, with a new fence. Um, so that is why I did think that they were going to open up the mountaintop because there were signs of it. Um, the third one is Splashworks late night hours. I think for now, Splashworks closes at 5 p.m. some days and 6 p.m. others, or it could be the other way around. 6 p.m. some days, 7 p.m. others. I think that they could start offering, you know, 7 p.m. to like 9 p.m. or 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. Again, an upcharge event for people to come into Splashworks and have late night hours, almost even like party setting with like DJ lights and a DJ, um, you know, stuff like that. They don't even need to have the wave pool open because I know the, the whole thing about the wave pool is it would be hard to see people or you could just have lights shining on the wave pool. There are ways around that, but again, if they even wanted to, they could just have the water slides open um, with lights on in the pool and the wave pool and the wave pool not open if it's uh, that serious of a safety issue. Whew, okay, I need to breathe. Anyways... <laughs> That is my business plan for Canada's Wonderland coming out of the pandemic. Um, I definitely think that we could see some of these ideas all around. I would love to see these ideas coming to Canada's Wonderland. Lots of areas of opportunity around food and beverage and year-round events, especially in Canada and the Toronto area. Um, and then the clickbait attractions, I really think, are the icing on the cake for the park, considering those three are very cheap on the budget and would draw in a large crowd. I want to hear from you guys in the comments section. What do you guys think of my business plan for Canada's Wonderland? Do you enjoy it? What would you change on it? Um, or do you just absolutely hate it? Comment down below. I'll partake in the conversation. Thanks so much for watching my video today, guys. Have a good night. Bye.